Hi, it's Leslie Meredith with Breakbulk Events and Media here in Rotterdam. We have just finished a session on what is next in the energy transition. And I have Mauro from Techni Technicas Reunitas, big EPC company, uh, here with me in the studio. And he was on that panel and will uh, give us some of the high points. So welcome, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about um, the projects that you're working on and how is the energy transition affecting you and your customers and what you're being asked to do? Okay, so my uh, EPC, my company uh, has been historically an EPC that has worked for all the oil and gas uh, players in the world, right? So uh, by 2050, there's this need of being fully decarbonized. So all the industries that are now polluting the air uh, need to be uh, producing zero carbon uh, emissions by 2050, right? So all of our clients, which are basically oil and gas people, need to have all the refineries refurbished by that date, by that time. So that is our main play field now. We need to develop all those technologies for our clients. And at a certain point, I don't know if it's going to be sooner or later, we'll have okay. to start doing that work for them and refurbishing their refineries and their, and their uh, industries. So by 2050, they have zero emissions. And so they're going to need that sooner or later. Right, so better to be prepared sooner, I Correct. imagine. Correct, that's why we're, we're working from, since three years ago in getting all those technologies and being ready for when our clients require us to start uh, working in that direction, being able to go, go, go. Yeah, absolutely. So how far along would you say you are? We are you're pretty much ready to start working with our wow. actual clients, right? So if one of our actual clients said tomorrow, I need you to decarbonize this plant for us, we are ready. We're already working with some clients in decarbonization uh, uh, refurbishments for their plants. So we're ready. With time, we will get better. We will do it faster. It would be, uh, it, it would work the technology would work and will will be more efficient? Yes, of course. Uh, but obviously the run is long. We still have until 2050 to, all these companies have until that year to, to be zero emissions. So there's still room to improve and to, uh, and to get better, but we are already doing work for clients um, in the field, not just theoretically, but right. Working, so. Excellent, excellent. Now I do want to clear up a misperception, certainly that I've had. Uh, so the energy transition does not mean that we will transition from fossil fuels to all renewables. Is that correct? No, that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what's going to happen, no. Okay, uh, tell us what, about that. What will happen is, or what should happen is by, by 2050, we shouldn't be polluting the air and contaminating the world as we're doing now. But, but there's no way the world can work only on electric batteries or cells. Okay. Right? Because you need to be moving food, materials, and every kind of stuff all around the world. And that means huge vessels running all over the world. And uh, you would need three times the size of a vessel in batteries to be able to have that vessel running around the world, picking up materials and stuff. So unfortunately, uh, um, uh, fossil um, uh, fuels will have to stick around. What we need to do is improve improve the process so using them is not as contaminating as it Got is right it. now. Okay, now where does hydrogen fit into the mix? Hydrogen is, uh, it is clean. It's a clean uh, way of working, but um, hydrogen is volatile and it's dangerous. So 
For instance, if you were driving a hydrogen car and you were involved in an accident and uh, by whatever chance it, you got fire, the, the, in the accident caught fire with your car, hydrogen is explosive, right? So that's why hydrogen is not being used so much in everything because it's it is dangerous, right? It is not you cannot handle it so easily. And uh, but but at a certain point it will happen also because. Uh, but if it hasn't happened over the last twenty years, we had already twenty years ago or thirty years ago we already had hydrogen cars, and they did not they did not get to where. For instance, Tesla is getting or, or the like. So there's a why there. It's not as safe. It's not as uh, yeah. It's not a, as easy to handle as it seems. I understand. So as you look around um, the exhibition halls here mm -hmm. and you see uh, carriers, heavy haulers, all different kinds of logistics and transportation providers. How would you describe uh, the opportunities or the market for them in the next few years? Well, that's going to be tricky, and we were discussing that in panel. Um, as there is a clock ticking to get to 2050, at a certain point, there's going to be more, uh, more need of materials and services than what's going to be probably out in the market. So there's, there's, there's going to be probably a short, shortage of, uh, of uh, availability in vessels, availability of raw material even, right? But as I was saying in the panel, um, we will go through bumps, right? But the moment the big uh, private companies feel that they need to run to get uh, to get to that point and they start putting money in the market then we will have more vessels running around we will uh, be able to um, have more uh, resources allocated and probably um, governments will get a little out of the way because now um, they try to help but it's not uh, sometimes regulations become an obstacle, right? And uh, but but I, as I was saying in the panel, this has to happen because Mars, living in Mars, is not an option, right? Right. We only have this. We only have this. This is for what sure. we have. You're we right. Have this. You're right. All right. Well, thank you so much no, for talking to us. A lot of great insights here. Thank you thank very much. Thank you.